If you're like me, your 3D printing collection has grown over time, and chances are you've got multiple machines from different manufacturers. That's been one of the biggest challenges for me, finding a slicer that supports all my printers without constantly switching between different software. That's exactly why Orca Slicer has been on my radar. It's been evolving fast, adding powerful features, and best of all, it's a true alternative that works across multiple printer brands. And with the latest Orca Slicer 2.3 beta, things have gotten even better. From a completely revamped filament management system to advanced bridging controls and new textured surface options, this update is packed with improvements. So let's dive into everything new in Orca Slicer 2.3 beta and see how it stacks up. But first, some huge news. Orca Slicer was just honored with the Software of the Year Award from 3D Printing Industry for 2024. Also, if you use printables.com, you're in for a treat. Orca Slicer now supports Open in Orca Slicer feature. That means you can now send models directly from printables.com into Orca Slicer with just a click of a button. Huge props to Prusa and the team for making this integration happen. This is a big win for the community and makes downloading and slicing models even more seamless. And I'm sure soon we're going to see other marketplaces following in these footsteps. And here's another important update. Orca Slicer finally has its own official website. You can now visit orcaslicer.com for the latest downloads, updates, and official information. This is a big deal because for a while there were some unofficial websites popping up which led to confusion and even potential security risks. But now with an official site in place, the community has a trusted source for everything related Orca Slicer. One of the biggest changes in Orca Slicer 2.3 beta is the complete rework of the filament profile system, along with the introduction of a global filament library. This update solves a major pain point for users organizing filament profiles across multiple printers. Previously, filament profiles were locked into a specific brand. That means if you had an Elegoo, your profiles wouldn't work with your FlashForge or vice versa. This made it frustrating to add and manage filament vendor profiles across different machines, forcing users to manually recreate them for every printer model. Now with the new global filament library, you can use filament presets across all different printer models, have specialized profiles for specific printers, Orca will automatically select the best version based on the printer model. And you can enjoy an easier filament profile creation process, making it simpler for manufacturers to submit their profiles directly to Orca Slicer. And to kick things off, some sample filaments have already been added to the global library, meaning every machine can start using them right away. This is a huge step forward in simplifying the filament management and making Orca Slicer even more powerful and user friendly. Another great improvement in Orca Slicer 2.3 beta is the re-enabled dependency setting UI for the filament. With the new filament profile system, users can now set dependencies for filament profiles, making it easier to use custom filaments across multiple printers. This means if you fine tune a filament profile for one machine, you won't need to manually recreate it for another. Orca will handle the compatibility for you. This is something I've been begging for a long time. This update adds another layer of flexibility, making filament management even more streamlined for users with multiple printers. If you're a fan of fuzzy skin, this update is going to take things to another level. Orca Slicer 2.3 Beta introduces new structured noise options, giving you even more control over surface textures, not just for hiding layer lines, but for adding unique design elements to your prints. Previously, fuzzy skin worked by randomly displacing points on the outer walls of a print. While it did help mask artifacts, it often created a horizontal pattern that can make layer lines even more noticeable. But with this update, structured noise algorithms have been added, allowing for a smoother, more organic, and visually interesting textures. These new styles aren't just functional, they open up a new creative possibility. Whether you want to add a subtle grainy texture or marble-like effect, or even a patchwork style finish, you now have more options to experiment with. And here's what's new. Perlin Noise, a classic structured noise algorithm that creates smooth organic textures. Billow Noise, a variation of Perlin Noise with a cloudy-like billowy appearance. Rigid Multifractual Noise, generates random ridges, great for marble-like and layered effects. Verano Noise, creates a patchwork effect by dividing the surface into irregular cells. Whether you're using fuzzy skin to hide layer lines, add grip to functional prints, or just make your print stand out, these new options bring way more flexibility and creativity to the table. So go ahead and experiment with these textures that not only fix print flaws, but also make your models look amazing. A new 2D lattice fill pattern has been added, specifically designed for lightweight model aircraft structures, especially wings that use single walls and low infill percentages. This pattern creates a planar 2D lattice structure, typically oriented perpendicular to the wing cord, but users can fine tune its orientation using the fill angle setting. The lattice itself consists of two alternating groups of structural elements, 
each at a user-specified angle relative to the Z direction. These angles can be adjusted independently, giving more control over strength and weight distribution. For anyone working on printed RC planes or aerodynamic models, this new fill pattern offers a strong yet ultra-lightweight solution for structural components. Building on the improvements to lightweight structural fills, this update also brings more control over bridges, improving both internal and external bridging performance. Internal bridge density, this setting helps improve cooling efficiency by slightly increasing the spacing between bridge lines. It also helps prevent over-extrusion on thicker internal bridges, allowing the material to spread more evenly instead of bunching up. Second bridge layer over internal bridges. This is a huge improvement for high-speed, high-acceleration printers. Instead of laying down a single bridge layer and moving straight to solid infill, this feature adds an extra bridge layer first, reinforcing the structure before speeding up. Second bridge layer over external bridges. Similar to the internal bridge enhancement, this feature strengthens the external bridges before transitioning to solid infill, improving surface quality and ensuring better print reliability. With these improvements, bridging an Orca slicer is now stronger and more adaptable, giving users more control over print quality, cooling, and extrusion consistency. To further refine bridge printing, two additional enhancements have been introduced. Separate internal bridge fan speed control. Now internal bridges can have their own cooling settings independent from other bridge structures. This allows for better cooling efficiency and prevents issues like sagging or poor layer adhesion. Internal bridge angle override. Users can now manually override the angle of internal bridges giving more control over print strength and material flow, especially useful for complex geometries. In addition to these major enhancements, this release includes over 300 bug fixes. There are simply too many to list here, but if you're interested in the full breakdown, I'll include a link in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. This update brings some serious improvements to the infill management, bridging, and slicing efficiency, making Orca Slicer even better. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and as always, happy printing.